Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Cop gunman killed in shootout in Trenchtown. A police corporal from the Kingston Western Division is among two men dead following a shootout in Trenchtown late Thursday. Reporters understand that the incident occurred sometime after 11 p.m. on Third Street in the St. Andrew community. It is understood that a gunman engaged the cop in an exchange of gunfire, during which both men were fatally shot. An illegal firearm was seized following the incident. There is now a high police and military presence on the scene. It is the second policeman to have been killed in less than a week. On Saturday, 22-year-old Constable Brian Martin was shot dead at a wake on Ricketts Avenue in Kingston 13. Four other people were shot in the incident. Three arrested as probe into Hanover businessman's death continues. Three people are in police custody after a daring robber at the supermarket in Hanover left the owner dead. Head of the Air One Police Assistant Commissioner Clifford Chambers said that investigations indicated that more people may be involved in the incident, which was caught on surveillance camera. On Wednesday, 36-year-old He Young, the operator of supermarket and wholesale, was shot during a robbery at his establishment in the Just One Plaza in Orange Bay. The incident reportedly took place at 4.45 p.m. ACP Chambers said that the detectives are continuing to follow leads. The motive for the killing has been established as robbery. The assistant commissioner went on to appeal to the public to assist the investigation by reporting any information they may have to the Green Island Police at 876-956-9200, the Lucy Police at 876-956-2333, Crime Stop at 311, the JCF tip line at 811 or the nearest police station. Coco Peace mass murderer to serve five life sentences. Roshane Barnett, the man who brutally murdered a Clarendon mother and her four children, was ordered to serve five concurrent life sentences. Barnett was ordered to serve 61 years and eight months in prison before being eligible for parole. The sentence was handed down by Justice Leighton Pusey in the Home Circuit Court. The judge was spot on, DPP please, with Coco Peace killer sentence. Director of Public Prosecution, DPP Paula Llewellyn, says she believes Justice Dayton Pusey made the right call in the sentencing of Coco Peace killer, Roshin Barnett. Well, first of all, let me uh, really record my appreciation for the very, very collusive judgment of the court. It sought to educate and it sought in a very transparent way to really make it quite clear. One, how sentencing, the sentencing function of a judge is very, very difficult. But on the other hand, because of where we are in the 21st century, it showed a very, in a very positive way the, the, the answer by the judiciary to answer the public, to respond to the public clamor for transparency and to explain so certainly as director of public prosecution i wish to salute the judge and the judiciary that he represents and also the forward thinking of the chief justice who gave his approval for the live streaming so that the members of the public would have another way separate and apart from the media to actually hear from themselves how the system works i believe the judge was spot on in how he dealt with it. He properly considered the aggravating factors, the mitigating factors. I thought that was the correct starting point, according to law. And he answered the call of history when he recognized, as we did, that there was no legal precedent for a case of this nature. And especially at a time in Jamaica, where you have several multiple murders being committed at the same time in the same space in Jamaica land we love. It is a it is a great call by the judiciary to show that these sort of matters don't do it. It will be dealt with strongly and effectively and with a lot of testicular fortitude. So we are, very, we are very pleased on this side. And, and we spoke to the, the mother and the uh, aunt and the father. Oh, they are right here. They are right here. And they seem to be quite pleased. 
public reacts to sentencing of Roshane Barnett. There was an overwhelming sense of anger from the public to Roshane Barnett's five life sentences on Thursday outside of the Home Circuit Court. Yeah, we we will work with the six so he, he deserved more than us. He deserved at least 125 but we will work with it we work with what they says still because at the age of eighty four will be maybe maybe at eighty four. We'll work with that. Him for stay forever in there, him wicked. I could have me and my children, you know. A five children me have, I could have me and my children. Him for stay forever in there. Forever and ever, amen. Him should never dead this, so. Him should never dead this, so for nobody to talk about him. Him should have last way. I want to him, hanging for come up. Mr. Government, bring him back in. Shock, shock them in the shock kitchen. We're tired. My, my condolences to the family. My heart goes out for them. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't wish him bad. God of God, whatever you sow, you reap. But it's just heartrending to know that they take down five life at once. Like it is nothing. I know what the family is going through. I've lost family members. And my mom. I know what it is like to lose a loved one. But what, as what I said before, just leave everything in God's hand. I feel very great and I feel good about it. That is a fair sentence and he deserve it. Yes, he deserve every, every, every step and he deserve it. He shouldn't even get a liar. Straight sentence, same time. Justice will serve somewhat. 61 years and 8 months is a long time and he won't be eligible for parole so so we can work with that i can drive them back now to coco peace and we're gonna rejoice somewhat because it's better than 45 years it's a whole lot better than 25 years that he could have gotten yeah. owing to the fact that he pled guilty you understand so 68 years 61 years, 61 and, years and, and eight months, months is a long time before parole Man beaten by residents after reportedly robbing basic school in Clarendon. One of three men who reportedly robbed a basic school in Clarendon was beaten by residents as they made their escape on Thursday morning. Reports are that a resident noticed a vehicle with three strange men in the vicinity of Keckles Basic School and raised an alarm. Citizens then discover that a stove, a refrigerator, a microwave, oven, and several food items were missing from the school. As the men attempted to flee, one was reportedly captured and beaten by the residents. It is believed that the car in which they were traveling ran out of gas and was being refilled. Several of the stolen items were found in the car. Other items were found in nearby bushes. The man is now in hospital under police guard. The other two men are said to have escaped. Residents of Grand Spen benefiting from major GPS infrastructure upgrades. Residents of Grand Spen in St. Andrew are said to be benefiting from upgrades from the Jamaica Public Service GPS. According to a release on Thursday, infrastructure upgrades in the era will see over 700 existing customers being transferred to a newly installed residential advanced metering infrastructure system. The electrical infrastructure development work in Grand Spain started in March 2021 under the GPS Community Renewal Program to provide safer and more reliable electricity supplied to the community. It was also initiated to encourage regularization by bringing more people onto the grid legally. In addition to the infrastructure improvements, JPS has been engaging residents and facilitating the sign-up of new customers. It's very important to JPS that users of electricity are safe and have access to reliable supply. The upgrade of our infrastructure in Grand Spain will help us to achieve these targets while increasing the number of legal customers on the grid, said Rashid Anderson. Director of Revenue Security at JPS. JPS is investing over $56 million in its capital infrastructure in the community, improving its system while adding to the legal pain customer pool. The recent cut over to the new system is also tackling the 61% theft level in Grand Spain. With the new system, existing illegal connections were removed and the ability to illegally connect to the network has been severely limited. Similar upgrade work has been put in on Barnet Hall, Tower Hill, Augustown, Phase 2, and Granville. The most recent communities where similar electrical system upgrades and social intervention have begun. The JPS Community Renewal Program, which was established in 2014, has been successful in converting thousands of households 
to legitimate electricity usage in communities in Kingston, St. Andrew, St. Catherine, and St. James. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.